Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malacote. I'm an anchor and reporter for KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is an old colleague of mine in Boston. He has created a company called Sous Chef, a chance to bring a top flight chef virtually into your home and cook one of those delicious quarantine meals. Say hi to an old colleague of mine, Josh Schneider. Josh, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Frank? I'm well, I'm well. Uh, well, let's talk about this idea has kind of morphed in our COVID-19 world. Tell us about the platform pre-COVID and what you folks are doing now. Yeah, absolutely. So um, myself and a few partners created a company called Chef, uh, created as a booking platform to bring a chef into your home. Uh, and around the first week of March, we realized that was not going to be much of a reality. And we shifted that to a virtual concept. So now the idea is that a chef can help you cook a fantastic meal based on what you have in your pantry or your fridge, freezer, et cetera. So you don't have to do shopping for this. All you do is do a little inventory, go through the pantry and say, I've got a little paprika. I've got some uh, flank steak and some asparagus. Uh, help me out. Yeah, you know, what, what we're seeing is that a lot of guests default to the same meals, right? The things that they're comfortable with. Um, but the, the professional chefs are able to bring a little more creativity to help elevate those meals. Uh, and you named paprika, but the spice rack is usually a great starting point. Exactly. Well, what if your cupboards are bare? Do some of your, uh, some of your people probably go out and do a little shopping, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, part of the intent here is to limit the amount of trips that people are taking to the supermarket, which is why these chefs are so helpful with their creativity. Um, but we do see that a lot of times people are booking this about a week or two in advance, and they end up planning their shopping trip around the event itself. Very good, because no one has water chestnuts in their house unless they... <laughs> we don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't either. Uh, well, tell us about your chefs. You got a dozen and you got more to come. Uh, how did you come about the group you got? Yeah, you know, uh, most of them are here in the New England area. Uh, we do have a couple outside of New England, which is great. Uh, and, and our intent is just to continue to build this network. Uh, there's no reason for us to not be able to work with chefs all across the country. And, and for the chefs, it's been really easy conversations. A lot of chefs are either furloughed, unfortunately, from their current restaurants, or they're just looking for a, a safer way for them to get back to work. Uh, and this is something that can complement even when they do start to return, you know, across the country. It's very inconsistent how the restaurants are reopening. Right. Um, but even as they start to return, a lot of them have expressed an interest in staying around, even working one to two, you know, nights a week, uh, helping some of our guests. It's a very low level of effort. We, we had a great anecdote from one of the chefs uh, who said he feels like a retired chef now. He doesn't have to do any of the cooking. and doesn't have to do any of the cleaning. Yeah. You might want to put a little more of that in there. Uh, I bet it's fun. How, how do they spend the entire start to finish meal or how long do they actually uh, hang out? Yeah, so there's the initial intake uh, where we capture photos and lists of what the guests have on hand. Um, they, they develop a, you know, an unexpected meal for these guests. And then the cooking sessions themselves range anywhere between 60 to 90 minutes and they stick around and then they allow you to eat in peace. All right, well, uh, we all have our go-to quarantine meals. Most of them, I think we're all sick of. I go into Trader Joe's and buy the same stuff time and time and time again. Tell us uh, maybe, I don't know, have you had a chef virtually? What did you make? Was it good or anybody else? Yeah, so we, we did work with one of our chefs. Um, so, you know, wanted to make sure we could uh, test drive the product itself. We made a chicken thigh uh, tikka masala that was just fantastic. And it was over coconut rice. Um, and we even had where my, my wife um, prides herself on being a, an expert in cooking rice. And the chef taught her a couple new techniques that we've now put into practice on a, on a regular basis. So it was, it was an awesome meal. Um, we were able to treat it as if it was a date night, you know, broke out the fine china, tablecloth, put the kids to bed, made sure that they didn't come out and interrupt us during the couple hour session. Uh, it, was, it was just, you know, a nice distraction. Uh, and, you know, that's a lot of the sentiment that we're hearing from our guests as well. It's a, it's a nice, entertaining distraction. The chefs are very entertaining, great storytellers. Uh, but typically, people are learning one to two new techniques as well. 
that they can take with them for, for their regular meals. Well, and that's a bonus. It's not only you're getting a good meal, you're doing something probably with your partner or with your family. And, uh, you know, you might make this meal another 50 times down the road, and you might learn a little uh, cooking technique too, right? A absolutely. So for us, it's been the rice. That's a staple in our household, and yep. now we've got a, a better technique for it. Uh, for other people, it might be a marinade or a rub. It doesn't have to be the meal itself, but a way that you can continue to elevate what else you're cooking. And could this meal be for two or 22? It doesn't matter the I guess yeah, just more ingredients, right? Yeah, exactly. It's more ingredients. Uh, we, we do try and keep it to a one-on-one -on -one session. What we've learned from both guests and chefs, it's more intimate and the chefs are able to hone in on the different skill levels of the guests um, and can come in and provide the right guidance as well to help make any corrections that are needed. We certainly are opening it to multiple households, uh, but it creates a little more of a challenging dynamic. I bet. I bet. You can only get so many in on uh, a window, so to speak. Exactly. Um, is it affordable? What's it cost? Yeah. So right now for the virtual sessions, uh, we are a marketplace. So the chefs set their own fees. Uh, right now, the range is between 60 to $120. Oh, that's that right. might change over time. Yeah. You know, as more chefs come in. Um, but again, this is, this is really to help these chefs get back to work, provide a nice entertaining experience for guests. Uh, and to your question, you know, we think it's an affordable product as well. I would say, well, dinner for two in San Francisco, you're out a couple of hundred bucks. So you might as well eat at home and enjoy. Um, and what it's, kind of, it's all B BYO, right? Exactly. Exactly. The wine's a lot cheaper at home, too, by the way. Um, well, tell us, uh, what kind of reaction are you getting around the New England here? Yeah, pe people are really excited. You know, people here love food. This time of year, it's all about lobster rolls and fried clams, and people are just, you know, trying to get outside and and celebrate as much as they can. But you know, with the absence of being able to get together for barbecues and, and lobster rolls with other people, uh, this this has been a, a great activity. You know, they can cook with their families, whether it's with their children, you know, or their partners, as you mentioned, um, and just be able to connect with a chef and learn something and and have a better meal for us. We're very sick of grilled cheese sandwiches in this household. Amen. Never thought, never thought I would say that, but we are. Um, so, you know, it just provides another, another outlet for you to try something a little different. I did a um, uh, kind of watched as he did something virtually. Charlie Palmer owns a lot of uh, restaurants in New York and Las Vegas and up here in wine country in California. And he made this beautiful, um, uh, it was cabbage and bacon and onion and you laid a nice piece of salmon on it. I never thought to bake it that way because I always barbecue. And I took notes and I'll tell you what, I cooked it uh, about a week later on Easter and it was fabulous. So uh, it does work virtually, I'm here to tell you. Um, and I, and I, like I'm bragging right now, there's a great sense of pride, I think, when you do something yourself, especially if it tastes good, right? Absolutely. You know, we, we've been joking. There's only so many puzzles that you can complete during this period of time. Here's another challenge for you. Well, tell us, will you eventually go back to your original model where uh, you're going to actually have some of these chefs come to homes or will it be, uh, hey, this is working. Maybe we'll do a little of both. Yeah, absolutely. For, for us, it's continuing to, to build and evolve. You know, we'll continue to assess and learn how different cities and states are handling uh, the reopenings and groups being able to aggregate. Uh, but we do see the in-home chef as a, as a great controlled environment, a nice alternative to restaurant dining. You get to hear the stories and the smells of all the food that the chef is cooking. They take care of the cleanup for you. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's a more controlled environment with eight to 12, maybe even 20 people, as opposed to a, you know, 100, 200 people in a packed restaurant. Well, I always ask our guests uh, what it's like in their community. Tell us about Boston, because I know that's been a, that's been a hot spot, to say the least, with uh, the coronavirus. Yeah, you know, fortunately for us, we've been, uh, we've been able to stay away from the Boston, Cambridge, downtown areas. Um, the suburbs seem to be pretty good. Traffic is very light, which is a very nice. occurrence over here. Um, you know, my lease mileage is staying very low, which is nice. Uh, but, you know, one thing that we have noticed is the uptick in community. So while people are out, you know, wearing their masks, keeping their distance, uh, but people are out taking bike rides and walks and right. grilling and saying hi from a distance and 
know, these are things that maybe we took for granted before, but certainly are, are reappearing uh, more than we ever you know, saw them in the past. Yeah, I think we're getting back to our roots, which is uh, kind of nice. Your community, your neighborhood, uh, having dinner with your family, uh, yeah, putting away the electronics, all that kind of thing. Uh, what's the... Uh, What's going on with restaurants there? Are you able to dine or is it still takeout only or, or what? Yeah, so you know, don't fully quote me on it, uh, but I think that's part of the phase two reopening here right. in the Massachusetts area. Um, and I know that there's going to be a limit in terms of capacity. Uh, and I, I think it's just a big unknown for a lot of the restaurant owners and you know, the, the kitchen staff. Uh, what does that mean, the 25 to 50% capacity how do they handle that? You know, we've certainly seen a lot of reports of restaurants um, unable to make the numbers work, unfortunately, you know, based on the margins that they're working under, uh, and other restaurants maybe shifting more full-time towards takeout because they can limit the, the staff that they need to pay um, and make the numbers work a little bit better for them. So it, it feels like it's a, it's a big wait and see right now, uh, but I do know that the food community is is very excited for the reopening and to try and support these business owners. Yeah, I can only imagine after living in New England for 26 years, I I know you count the summers summer weeks up on your fingers, you know. Oh my God, it's Labor Day. We got to put in the lawn furniture and rake our leaves, and then of course it's snow and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we we had snow a few weeks ago. I so know you very did. limited. That just isn't <laughs> Well, we've got a lot of viewers out there that probably would like to uh, take a bite of this. Tell us, uh, tell them how to get a hold of you. Yeah, so it's chef.co, so chef, C-H-E-F-T, dot co, so C-O. Um, and that's where you can find us for the in-home bookings or the virtual solution, which you mentioned earlier is Sue Chef. Um, and as you mentioned, we're just continuing to build out that network of chefs. So over time, hopefully we've got more and more and a greater diversity in terms of the cuisine that they can help you cook. Well, we all like to eat. I hope it's a big success. Josh uh, Schneider in uh, the greater Boston area. Josh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Frank. All right, I'm Frank Malico with KTVU Fox 2 here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Remember, if you want more information, always go to coronavirusnow.com. Have a great day, everybody.